Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live. It's uh, Saturday, February the 18th, 2012. Our topic today is uh, QR codes in the classroom, and our show hosts, uh, Kim Case, Lorna Constantini, and Peggy George, are excitedly happy to feature. Kim is really proud of herself here, and I'm so excited that we actually can have one of our show hosts share her gifts and talents today. So Kim is our special guest. So yes, woo thanks, Len. It is great to have uh, uh, Kim share her expertise with us today. I did mention a few minutes ago when we were doing our uh, little explanation of Blackboard Collaborate that we do record everything to do today. So if you are new, please remember that we do have a website, live.classroom20.com. Archives and resources page is specifically important because we'll do a recording, full uh, Blackboard Collaborate recording, uh, MP3 file, uh, and an iPod um, friendly MP4 file. Uh, for you to view your um, the show later on, but I'm actually not saying that correctly because you have to view that video in the web page. But we do have uh, an iTunes U channel that uh, Kim will explain a little later on in the show. Um, the chat flies by very quickly, and we copy all that chat for you and post it on the blog post as well. So right away, I'm going to get you started. I talked about using uh, your laser pointer, which is on the left-hand side of the whiteboard. I want you to click on that pointer, drag it to wherever you're located in the world, and let it go. This is a really good opportunity for us to see our world worldwide connections. You just need, if you can't work that um, laser pointer, then just type in the chat where you're located. Because I'm here in St. Catharines, Ontario, in Canada. Uh, Peggy's in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, Kim's in San Antonio, Texas. So that's where we're located. And uh, go ahead and Great Britain, I think we have someone, or Europe. Not quite sure where we're located. So please have fun. Uh, say hello and uh, type where you're from in the chat. I did talk about our archives and resources page and we also have something called the live binder and uh, Peggy's just going to pop that up in, in web tour so we can actually see what it looks today it's a uh, compilation of all the links for the for this show uh, we put one up for every month and today Kim is featured so all the links that Kim's going to be sharing are located here um, across the page and down and you'll find uh, a great way to uh, sort through and review the things that excited you during the day. So don't worry if you don't find the link and um, miss it. You'll be able to go back to the live binders and uh, uh, look up the information as you need it. So uh, thank you, Peggy. We're just going to go back to the slides. And what are we going to talk about next? Just waiting for my computer to catch up to me. Not wanting to catch up with. Thank you very much. Um, poll questions. Seems my computer was not cooperating this morning again. Um, let's go back to number one. Um, first poll question. Remember the little icon on the right, green check. If it's a yes, have you ever scanned a QR code using a mobile device? So go ahead and vote. And again, if you can't get that voting function to work, just say yes in the, in the chat. It works just as well. It's a drop-down menu. If you click on it, um, yeah, it'll work for us. You're right, Peggy. My computer needs some vitamins. It's happened a couple of times. So let me publish the, the results quickly to the whiteboard here. Ooh, half of us have had the opportunity to do this, so you're going to have a lot of fun today doing it during the show. Let's go to our next poll question, and, and I'm just going to clear the vote. And uh, have you ever created a QR code using a QR code generator? That's another good question. So yes, if you have, and no, if you haven't. Let's 
even if it had a chance to vote just about here. So let's look at the results. Again, 44% of us, almost, you know, more than half of us has had a chance to do that during the day. Go to our next poll question. Are your students allowed to use cell phones on your campus to scan QR codes? Take a look at the votes and see. Not so many here. Because we do have a, a really good discussion about using cell phones in the classroom on campus as well. So I know they're missing a golden opportunity, and Kim's going to explain why. So thank you very much for the votes, and I'm going to move on now to introducing Kim to you. And you know, some of you hear Kim everywhere can maybe not know some of the background that she has. And she's been an educator and technology specialist for the past 20 years, and she graduated from the University of uh, Texas in San Antonio with a Bachelor Arts in, of Arts degree. And she began her educational career teaching in elementary grades and middle school math. In 2006, she achieved the pinnacle of her educator certification and became a national board certified teacher in career and technical education with a specialty in technical education. Um, um, Kim has written and secured funding through several national and local grants. Uh, she is a Star Discovery Editor, Educator, House not working yet, and serves on the Texas Dan Leadership Council. I, I think it's really important that part of her um, work for her dissertation, for her uh, master's work, was about using Moodle and math. And I know recently she, had, that she uh, presented at TISA all about QR codes, and so I know everyone enjoyed that particular presentation, and she's bringing that gift to us today as well. And so she's now on the hot seat and the microphone to answer our newbie question of the day, what are QR codes? And go ahead, Kim, I'm so pleased to be working with you. Thank you so much for that great introduction, and I'm so pleased to be talking to you today about QR codes. Uh, we're seeing QR And I'm not sure why I keep getting disconnected and coming back in, but we'll just go with the flow. Um, we're seeing QR codes everywhere, and there are the little black and white barcodes, and they're similar to the kind of barcodes that you see on, you know, different items that are scanned at the grocery store or when you go to Walmart or whatever. And we're going to go ahead and talk about the specifics of QR codes and the innovative ways that you can use the QR codes in the classroom. And I'm going to talk to you about how they became, uh, how they first got started, examples of how you can use them in the classroom, how to create them, and some resources to use. They first got started in about 1994, and Toyota and some of the Japanese uh, automakers started using them on car parts and they used to use them to track the car parts and when they were building the cars and they would scan them and keep track of what parts were in, in the inventory and when they were building the cars over in Japan. And the difference between a regular barcode like on a can of soup or something like that or a bottle of water is the regular barcodes are one dimensional. They're read horizontally. A QR code is read two dimensionally. Those little bits of data are read horizontally and vertically. And same with the, the bottom one, the Microsoft tag. They're read horizontally and vertically. And you'll need any type of device with a camera to with a what they call a QR code reader. And the bottom one is a Microsoft tag, and that's a proprietary tag, and you need a specific tag to read those. And you can get those tags, the reader at gettag.mobi. But most people use just a regular QR code, and I think it originated 
using the Microsoft tag because you could use color. But now you can start using color with the QR tags and you can also add in all kinds of icons and different logos within your QR code. So they become very innovative in the ways that they create the QR codes. So they become very evolved and very um, colorful and dynamic. You're seeing them, just like somebody mentioned earlier, that you're seeing them just about everywhere. Uh, you're seeing them in the media. You're seeing them, um, you know, as you walk by, you're seeing them in the print media, uh, on all types of advertisements. And the bottom left down here, you're also seeing, this is a episode on Jimmy Fallon. They had a dance session or a, a little a skit and somebody held up a QR code and if you caught it at that time and scanned it, it took you to a little special video with Jimmy Fallon and this is, uh, and I have the link on the follow-up resources that's in the live binder and it takes you to just a little special video, hidden video that he uh, created and, and it's like, oh, you found this secret video. So you're going to start seeing them just about everywhere, and it's a great way to link your a QR code to just all kinds of content. Yeah, on bikers everywhere, you're going to see them more and more. And these are edible QR codes, and if you scan these, you're going to see that they'll take you uh, to usually the the bakery or whomever created the individual food items. And in the middle here is a wedding cake and it will take you to the Canadian bakery that created this wedding cake right here in the middle. Um, the bottom left here, I believe uh, Peggy said that was from Starbucks. I'm not sure. Some of the other ones are hard to scan because um, on an edible item, it's hard to get the, the lines just right, but it's still a great cute idea to put um, a QR code on an, an item of food. And please feel free to scan some of these items in, in just about every window that you'll be able to uh, scan most of these items. You don't have to have your cell phone or uh, iPad 2 right up to your uh, computer and sometimes you have to angle it where it will adjust for the light but uh, you can then if you angle it just right it will adjust for the light it will compensate for it and then it will be able to get yeah the one with the, obviously that's missing part of this that's a good point that's missing part of the code obviously you won't scan um, and if it's a really light scan a really light QR code, it won't scan either. If you don't have a QR uh, app on your mobile device, I'll tell you which ones that you can get, and then you can download it while we're going through it, and then you'll be able to participate with this. Yeah, it makes me hungry too. And they have wearable QR codes on jewelry, uh, tattoos, um, on your haircut course on all kinds of clothing that you can put it just about anywhere that you'd like as well as landmarks buildings you know anywhere that you can think of that you want to put a QR code they're putting QR codes including landforms and if you scan this landform you'll see that it says when you scan it it says hello world so you can scan this uh, code right here on this screen Oh, the Cake Studio? Yeah, it went to Cake Studio. Um, it takes a little bit to get this one to scan, but I got it to scan last night from here, and it says, Hello World, if you're able to do it. At the end, if you're not, if I go too fast, you can save these uh, slides, and then you can go through them. And I have them on SlideShare, and you can go through them at your leisure, and then you can scan them as well. Yeah, Hello World scanned as well. But these are just a few of the QR code readers. There are tons 
oh, great, I'm glad you got it. There are gr tons and tons of QR code readers uh, that have become really popular. And the Git Tag one, that's, that's for the Microsoft ones. But I recommend Enigma, especially if you're going to be doing these with some of the younger students, because Enigma is very easy to use, and you don't have to have the QR code just right. You can it, it catches it for you, and there are a lot of things that you can do with it. You can type it in. Um, it saves in your history. It has a lot of great features other than just scanning it. And Enigma works with some, even if it's a very detailed QR code, it reads it, where some of the other QR readers don't read some of the detailed QR codes. And I'll explain what I'm talking about in just a minute. But Enigma is really great, especially if you're using the for the the younger ones. And you'll see here how it has to kind of be in that bar in that little red uh, square. Enigma will catch it, um, even if it's not directly in that square. And then it will. And if you scan this uh, code right over here on the left hand side, it will take you to this live binder, and it catches it for you. And it's the younger ones can get frustrated very easily. Um, and once you scan it, it Enigma takes you direct. It goes directly to whatever the QR code is linked to. And you can link a QR code to text. You can link it to an image, a website, whatever's on the internet, or whatever somebody sets the QR code to link to is where Enigma or any QR code reader will take you to. And in this case, it will take you to this um, this live binder. But Enigma is very easy even for young students to use. So that's why I recommend that you use Enigma because it, it's a very easy, uh, it's one of the easiest ones to use. This is QR stuff. and if you are going to use a QR code generator to create a QR code and you don't care about the analytics, about how many times somebody has scanned it, and I'll show you two that tell you some of those specifics, then QR stuff is great. It's super easy, and anybody can use that, including younger students. Um, but these are just a few of the QR code generators. There are tons and tons of QR code generators as well. But the bottom four here, these are ones that, that give you statistics on how many times your code was scanned. And this one here, Deliver, I'm going to show you in just a sec, gives you very specific analytics as well uh, for free. There are some that, that you have to pay, like QR stuff that I'm going to show you, and that will pay and that you can pay for analytics if you're interested, but for ed educators, we don't really necessarily need to pay for specific analytics. The, the marketers who and advertisers, they are the ones that, that pay and, and are more interested in the specific analytics. So I'm going to take you and show you qrstuff.com which is a website that you can create a QR code. And I'm going to show you how to do that. If I wanted to take you to a blog, like my blog, I'll just show you real quick. I'm going to type in kimcase.com. Now, if you'll notice on the left-hand side, these are all the different things and the, way, the reason why I like QR stuff is it's pretty easy and it's set up very quickly and easily. If I wanted to just put in text, then I could type it in. And it really helps you if you're trying to link it to different things. It helps you give you some of these things, and it's already kind of got those things set up. But if you wanted it set up to just a, a plain website, a uh, live binder, whatever you want it to set up, email address, your contact information, it's it's pretty much set up to, to do that for you. 
then you just click over here for whichever color you would like it to be. Now, I don't recommend yellow. Yellow is kind of hard for some of these QR scanners to scan. So then you just type in whichever your URL, click your color, and you can either download the image and save it to your hard drive, or you can just take like a screenshot, or if you have Digo, you can just save it to Digo. And, and then you've got your QR code, and you've made it. And then you can take that QR code as an image and post it to a blog, put it in a document, put it in a newsletter. You can post it um, anywhere that you'd like on your website. And you've already made your QR code. You can take a screenshot of it, and then you can share it. You can also print it, email it, as well as put it on these different things and, and buy these different items, you know, directly from the QR stuff site. But you've already made your QR code. This is already it. You're done. This is it. That's all that you need to do to make your QR code. So that's how quick and easy it is to make a QR code using qrstuff.com. That's why I like this one if you're going to make it. Now you notice right here where it asks you if you want to embed it as a code or if you want to use their shortener. And you'll notice if you look here at the QR code, if I put it as embed, which is fine, but if I put it as use their shortener, it kind of takes away a few pixels and makes it a, a few less pixels. Some of the QR code readers, if it's real detailed, they can't read the QR codes as well. Enigma is one that can read a very detailed code reader, which is why I recommend it. Some of the QR code readers can't read it as well, so they recommend that you use a, a shortener that takes away the um, some of the pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the slides. So that's qrstuff.com, um, and it's really easy to use, and that's why I recommend it wholeheartedly. Even the young students can use that in elementary. The one that I've been using is SnapView, and this is just a real quick image of the dashboard. You can see here how it shows you how many people have visited, and when I was creating my um, when I was creating my um, documents and things for TCEA, I reset everything to zero just by clearing the visits here so that I could tell when I passed out my things if um, once they had been scanned. The deliver.com gives you some very specific statistics and analytics as to where the the uh, location where they've been scanned, with desktop, and those kinds of things. If you're interested in those types of specifics, um, it, it just depends on what you're looking for. It, these types of specifics really didn't matter to me. And this is kind of what I'm talking about, about the shorteners. Not necessarily like uh, shortening the URL for you, but shortening the code. You'll notice on the left-hand side here, they have a lot of details, a lot of pixels in the code and, and the data in that left-hand side code. And in the right-hand side, you'll see that um, there are less pixels. And so they recommend that that you use one that has less pixels so it's easier for the QR code readers to read them. What you can do is if you have a regular URL, you can just type at the end dot QR code at the end of the bit.ly link and it will automatically give you a QR code and then you can use that QR code. So if you have a bit.ly link already and you shorten it with the bit.ly link and then just add dot .qr code, it will give you the QR code and it's a shortened link and a shortened QR code. Same with the Google shortened adding just a dot .qr code. 
I use SnapView because it gives you a shortened QR code and it gives you a shortened link. And you'll see what I'm talking about on um, on some of my QR codes that I share with you throughout the session. So how can we use QR codes in the classroom once we've generated using whichever generator that we want to use? Well, one thing that I like if you're teaching upper uh, science is the periodic table of videos. And if you scan this uh, code right here, this is for bismuth. Um, each of these little codes right here will take you to a short YouTube video about the different elements on the periodic table. And I think that's really cool. And and, and um, if the student can't remember or in just a, a more motivating, inspiring way of learning more about the different elements, I think this is a great way to have up on the wall just to reinforce what you're working with. And you, you can scan this business right here, and it will take you directly to that short little video, the YouTube video. These are two elementary examples of math fun. You may not be able to scan these right here in this QR example, but you will be able to scan these down here uh, on the mystery math ones. And it gives you the well, math problems, and I just took part of the math example uh, activities that they have. And once you solve their problems and their their examples uh, using the QR codes, then you, you get the the mystery solved. But these are just some examples and ways that you can use QR codes in an elementary math setting or an elementary math example activity. This is an old textbook, and you can do a lot of things with an old textbook. You, on each of the pages, you can add in a QR code, and if you angle it just right, this one's a little bit more difficult because the page is curved. But you can add in um, tutorial videos. You can add in, like, um, have the answers to the questions. You can do a flip classroom where you have the explanation to the the problems or the algorithms of the, the the math questions. You can have all kinds of, like a study guide created to support the content that's in a, a textbook. There are lots of things that you can do with the QR codes to support the content of a textbook, whether you're able to put it on the page or tape it and cut it out um, and tape it into the book or however or post it on the wall, whatever you however you want to structure it. Um, but this is a great example of using an old textbook and putting in like a YouTube video or study guide or something to support the content that you're teaching. They're great, great way you can put math casts. Um, students can also create the content to go with the QR code that you attach to like your algorithms and your math content. Um, so these are some great ways that you can support your uh, math content or any textbook. It doesn't have to be math. It can be any content area. This is an example of a timeline and throughout the timeline you can each of these you can scan and see where it takes you to. But through any timeline, you can have these um, go to a blog post, to uh, something in the archives, or the National um, Library of Congress, you know, you know to time.com, anything, DIN, you know, some of the DIN resources. However you want to structure it, you can link any of these QR codes to something and the, the students can plot the different places on your timeline using the QR codes. And this is just another great way to use QR codes to incorporate uh, the, the events of a timeline.
however you structure it. So I think this is a great, I love this example. I think it was really cool. And this science example um, where if you scan some of these things, well, because instead of just using the shortened URL, the um, some of the shortened URLs kind of get long, and if you have several of them throughout the uh, the timeline, the QR codes are just kind of easier to to put more of them throughout the timeline. And same similar with using the the QR codes throughout this this diagram of the cell, and I only put part of it up here, but you can just um, put your the QR code and it can go to, um, you know, an encyclopedia entry, whatever you want to link it to. This is just an example of how you can take a very detailed scientific diagram and the students can do research, they can write a blog post, they can um, collaborate together, create their QR codes to link to different videos, to link to whatever that they create, other diagrams, mind maps, whatever they create and link it to, and then use the QR code as that reference point on the diagram. And these are two different um, student projects that I just scanned for an example. The left one is the artwork, and with student artwork, like if you're doing a gal like a gallery walk, or if you have the artwork posted, you can have like a student bio, or the student can put either um, in a podcast or in written form what what they created, how they created it, what their inspiration was, what materials they used, why they um, chose that, who, um, what other um, sculptor or however, who their motivator was, inspir in, in, you know, their inspiration was, and then you can put that in QR code linking to that information. Same with any other student project of any type. You can put the QR code on the student project, put it on the wall or on a bulletin board, um, outside your classroom door, in the room, um, it's anywhere on campus, and have the student either narrate or have written information that's linked to student artwork or student projects telling about what their thinking was and how they created those different things. This one here, if you scan it, um, you'll hear this, the student talking about the, the project, that, the podcast that goes along with what she created. You'll hear her talking. And um, talking about Chicka Chicka Boom Boom, the book, but there, this is a great way to link a student podcast and the student talking or student narrating or having an older student read and narrate something for, for younger students in an elementary setting. Just a variety of ways that you can use podcasts linked to a QR code. Um, I'm not sure if they use VoiceThread or not, but you certainly could. There are a variety of ways that you could do this. You could post these either on the wall, post it to a Globster, embed it on a blog post, um, just a variety of ways that you could link your QR code to a student podcast narrating something or reading or talking about something. And if you scan this code, you will hear this, this student talking. Um, same with sheet music. If you, had, if you 
you were a band director or you were um, overseeing a symphony and you wanted to hear, you wanted the woodlands to hear their piece or a solo, somebody was going to be performing a solo and you wanted to hear them to hear just their part or you wanted the whole band to hear the entire score, you could link a QR code to that musical piece. And if you scan this code, you'll be taken to the page where you could hear individual pieces or order the 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 sheet music and and vice versa. So there's a lot of ways that you could use a QR code linked to music, sheet music, and MP3s. This is just a down, quick down and dirty um, feedback, you know, with, that you could use with colleagues. You could also do this with students. Um, you know, did you complete the assignment or did you bring your permission slip? Scan the yes if you did um, for attendance. You know, if the, you can just have it up on the wall if you're here. Scan it for the day. Um, you know, if you have a question, you know, the students could scan it. Um, it could be a voting, do you, you know, for lunch, who's buying hot lunch, those kinds of things. There's a variety of things that you could do um, with the voting and the inexpensive way of clickers if your students are allowed to have cell phones. And towards the end, I'm going to show you a way that you could use a browser instead of a mobile device and a QR station instead of a mobile device if your students are not allowed. And I know at the moment that a lot of AUPs do not allow mobile devices, but um, you know, a lot allow teachers to use cell phones, but you could certainly use these with colleagues for voting and for feedback during sessions. Um, you know, in uh, professional development sessions. So this is just one example that you could use with your colleagues. And um, some of these, I couldn't get these to scan, but you might be able to because of the, the angle on these books. But you can create, and the students, or the students can create actually, book trailers and kind of book reviews and you could put the and I got this this picture and this image and the idea from Gwyneth Jones and you can put these on different books and the students could scan them or take them to the QR station and scan them and, and um, either read or hear what the student said about the book or or print it out, however you have it structured with the QR code. And this is a real gr a great motivator for, for students to explore different books and yes, great for the iPads and iTouches that have the camera, the, I, the, the latest generation. And um, or you, if there's a video that goes that the the novel has been made into you could link it to the YouTube and uh, trailer. So there's just a variety of things that you could do with novel studies and the QR codes that you could link them to. So um, those are just things to think about that the students could do. There's a variety of things and a wealth of ideas that haven't even been explored that the, the students could create and create their own uh, QR codes and attach them to a library or to a classroom library of novels and novel studies. And, and then the kids could also share their QR codes with others in the classroom and, and, and get a different perspective on the novel or the chapter or their per perception of an event that happened or a character in a novel study. 
in a library or in your classroom or in a science lab or whatever department or something that you're working with, if you have new items, this is a great way to to share and just post on the wall, in the hallway, in the office, in the workroom, in the library. Hey, we got we have new items that are available in the library or or wherever, and just put up a QR code. Teachers can scan it, students can scan it. Um, in the cafeteria, you know, we have a, a new chocolate cake, whatever. You know, students can scan it and. Um, you know, find out what the new item is. Gwyneth Jones uses this um, idea where she shares related items. And um, this, if you scan this, it takes you to a blog post or a previous blog post. Um, I'm not sure how you pronounce the um, like pancake slot keys, slot keys. Uh, the Jewish pancakes that have, and but she puts related items that have to do with the the novels or the stories, uh, and that support the the books that she is has on display. Uh, and you can maybe put a recipe or something that goes along with a novel study that you have. Um, so that students could scan it, take it home, maybe do something with their parents, uh, science experiment, those kinds of things to kind of extend what they've been studying in the classroom or extend what they've been reading about to support uh, the, the whatever they're reading. So this is a great way to do that with the, the new arrivals. If you scan this code, this takes you to um, some a specific math section and and a higher education. I believe this is like a university or high school library. Um, I believe like a university professor put this in the um, the display in the shelves, and you can do this in a regular library in your high school and elementary and uh, you know point you can do this also in an elementary library putting this in the the books display and just you know as well you know check out this area and so forth just something about check out this location here uh, this is just another idea to support reading and to get students excited, uh, especially if it's a, a genre or an area of research um, to that's going along with what an assignment that you have that they may not be familiar with, or yes, like a required area, a, a required reading, or follow-up resources for assignment such and such. Check here. This is great uh, to support research. Um, if you have databases and that you want to make sure that the students are using, you can also attach a QR code to those databases to make sure and to make it easier for the students to access those databases um, and to have in their history on their phone so when they go home they can uh, follow up with the databases. So since they're expensive, we want to make sure that they're used. Just a variety of ways to, that you can support research and that you could support different areas of a library, a classroom library, school library, high school library, however, so forth. Um, just a great way to integrate what's going on in the classroom um, with possibly homework as well as um, tying everything together. If a student, this is great if you want 
to encourage students to read different genres or further uh, books by the same author or expand on the same kind of theme, you can put a QR code and recommend that they explore different, uh, maybe the same topic, but, you know, kind of a different uh, extension. Just you can post these throughout your campus library. This is just a great way to support and encourage students to continue reading and to explore reading. Um, this is my second QR session, but I'm going to start doing more on QR codes. I really become into QR codes. I've been doing research for the past year or so on QR codes. But there are just so many things that you can do with QR codes, and I, I just, I don't know, I just sit and think about all the things that you can do with QR codes. It's become my, my, my passion has become QR codes. And this one I think is great. Um, you can share about getting more information. You can put information about the author. You can put, like, a location. Uh, related to a novel study or about nonfiction. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can tie to about getting more information tied to a QR code when you are to a nonfiction or to a fiction book that's in the library or in your classroom. Put it in the hallway. Um, if it's not, if you're um, not a librarian, there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, where you're extending the information and still supporting literature and content. And you can also create with uh, the Google Maps, especially if you use the qrstuff.com one. And I think this is great. You can also use tripline.net or tripit.com to create adventures and to plot out different routes or just playing, just taking a map and creating a specific route. You can also do like the, the route of Lewis and Clark or um, if you're doing a novel study, you can plot the route that they went throughout a novel just a variety of things that you can do and you can have a starting point on a Google map and put that on a QR code and then there's a Google lit trips all kinds of things that you can do with your starting place on a Google map and then putting that it's a favorite place on Google and having this image and taking it from there there it's just a whole gamut that you can do exploring the globe. You can also bring in Google Earth, Google Lit Trips, um, all kinds of things. And putting in videos, you can uh, do virtual field trips along the way as well as actual field trips and exploring and, and a variety of things that you can do where you're starting at one place on a Google map and adding in all kinds of different things along the way. Same with geocaching. You can, this will take you to a place that you can buy the little geocache things, but the way I would structure it is I would ha give them a QR code with different clues and they would have to solve the clues or solve the math problem or figure out something and that would take them to another clue and to another clue and to another clue in order to be able to find the tree or the geocache or the prize or to find the next location to be able to solve the the, the mystery or, or, or so forth throughout the way. So that's how I would, um, similar to a treasure hunt, scavenger hunt, that um, using the geocaching items. 
You can also create the choose your own ending stories with having a student or colleague, however you want to structure it. The student writes the story and then they can choose several they can write several different endings and a QR code for the different endings and the students scan the different endings to figure out which one which ending they want to go to. And then they just scan the different endings to go from there. And each ending can have another set of QR codes to go to that ending and so forth. And you, you just continue and continue and continue. You can have a campus or a virtual tour or an emergency map that you've already explored the exits. Uh, you can put this on a website, you can put it on a handout, you can give this to parents, however, um, you can put this uh, videos related to the QR codes about different historical places on the, the map um, that you obviously can't put on a physical map. Just a variety of things that you can do related to the QR codes. If you have a complicated piece of equipment, you can put a tutorial or a document on how to use that piece of equipment. If you scan this, I believe it takes you to a YouTube video on how to use that piece of equipment. But you could do that with anything um, on your campus, in your classroom, where they wouldn't need you. The students is, could um, use it as well as your colleagues, especially if you're a librarian on how to uh, change a bulb or, or whatever, you know, how to unjam the coffee or, or uh, change the laminator, you know, substitute plant, whatever you want to link it to. You can, there are a variety of things, hey, I agree. There are a variety of things that you could do that you could uh, put a tutorial, put link it to a QR code so that you don't have to keep going in time after time after time. Just say, here, scan this, tells you exactly how to do it, walks you through it. You know, have you, and ask them, have you checked, have you scanned the code and, and gone through the, you know, the document, the video, or whatever, uh, before you contacted me to need help with the laminator or whatever. Same with computer lab procedures or duties or anything to that effect, whether it's in your classroom, or on library, for staff, or for your students. Procedures, routines, it's really great to have those things kind of already set up. You can put them on the wall, put them in the teacher workroom, uh, computer in the cafeteria, wherever, so that students, colleagues, whomever, will have easy access and they don't necessarily need you to figure out how to connect the projector, um, how to charge the um, laptops or, or connect the, uh, you know, the, the cows, the computer on wheel cart, whatever it is that they continuously can ask you o over and over about. And I know people have mentioned the treasure hunt. This is um, also, and I've seen the, the link, the class tools one. One thing I caution if you create this, and if it's a procedure like on how to uh, it's a process and you need the, the steps to be in a specific, the steps to be in a specific order in order for the treasure hunt to work out correctly. When you cut out and your QR codes, make sure that you keep them in the correct order because it's real easy once you cut them out and you printed them to get them mixed up. So uh, once you cut them out and get ready to post them, make sure that you label them or something so that they don't get out of order so that your students will go to the different locations or follow the process in the correct order. Vocabulary, you can have, you know, a keyword, a definition with the QR code on the back, 
or you can have it on specific items in your room. And if you scan that, you can have the English, talk about the English uh, word. And then if you scan that, you'll see the Spanish word uh, for that specific item. So that's something that you can do just for vocabulary reinforcement. For whether it's student work or teacher work, professional work, you can use live binders, you can use scoop it, um, all types of different compilations where you can curate work and create and compile work, whether it's a Google Doc, um, just a variety of things that you can do for portfolios, e-portfolios. Um, that you can link your QR codes to. Same with your books. Your books now are including um, the QR codes. I couldn't get this QR code to work. It's kind of blurry, but they're including them and to YouTube videos and other pictures and so forth that weren't included in the yearbook and different interviews with people podcasts that they might not have been able to include, uh, news clips that maybe weren't included, that you can't include in a yearbook or a newsletter or a newspaper, those kinds of things. You can put a QR code and link it out, and then uh, your yearbook becomes very interactive with the content that you've included. QR note is a way to create just an, a quick announcement. You input your content, save it, quick, um, uh, quick post, and then you have your QR code, and then you can um, post your QR code on campus, and it's qrnote.com. These are two examples, and you can scan these, both of these. The left-hand side is from Gwyneth Jones. Um, these, this was what she created for her parents to find out all the different things about her campus. The other uh, right-hand side, I forgot where it goes to, but you can scan it as well. Just a way to create announcements and flyers for your parents. Again, this is from Gwyneth. You can scan these as well. And these links I have posted in a resource document, and they are in the Live Finder on how to create um, a QR code. And she uses Bitly, but regardless, this is just a great guide that you can have posted for your students, for yourself, for your parents, for your colleagues, um, on helping them understand how to create a QR code. Kim, I just want to interrupt you because we're getting close to the top of the hour. I just wonder, would you like me to close out this session? Because I know you have a sure. lot more to share. And then sure. uh, people who can stay can stay on afterwards. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right, so I'm just going to take you through our closing slides to remind you that coming up on February 23rd, we have Ruth Sewell on um, Future for Education, and then on the 24th, Dennis Lipke on Big Picture Schools, and the 28th, uh, David Wernberger on Too Big to Know, a book I happen to be reading and is quite phenomenal, so I know I can speak for that particular show. And on our own upcoming shows, oh, I missed one here. Yes, our upcoming shows. Uh, next week, we have our first feature teacher from the nomination process, and it's Paula White. Uh, we're still working on March the 3rd, but March the 10th, I want you to bring your special attention to uh, Adam Sands and John Bergman are going to be talking about the flipped classroom. And on March the 17th, we're going to be having a joint presentation for a Moodle Leap that uh, Peggy and I are leading at SEAT as part of the Learn Now BC, Learn BC Now program. It's a free series that you might want to check out as well. And uh, we'll be having a great time with that one. So let's go on to our next slide. It's about nominating a featured teacher. As I said, uh, Paula White's already going to be our uh, featured teacher uh, next week. 
Um, we look for your nominations, and there's a form that you can fill out here. It'll pop up, and it's in the live binder. That uh, please uh, nominate a teacher that you think you'd like to share uh, with us during our show. Uh, that's the survey I talked about that you'll find the information. So please fill that in because it helps us to set the direction for our future shows and uh, give us any suggestions that you might like us to be aware of. And that'll pop up when you close the uh, session. And the other thing is that we do have a certificate of participation for just our shows. And there is a place in the survey for you to write in your uh, request for a uh, participation certificate. And if you don't get it, it's live at classroom20.com. Send us an email. And Peggy is um, very diligent in sending out those uh, certificates on our, our behalf. And then I want to call your attention to iTunes U channel that we're very happy to have um, for you. That's the tiny URL, CR20Live iTunes U. And there you're going to find the audio and video connection. I told you about before that you can download to your mobile devices, which is kind of appropriate for today. So uh, that's a good place to check out. And again, the link is on our uh, homepage for that. And uh, really a special thanks to you, Kim Diddy. I know she's still got a great amount to show, share with us, and I can't wait to hear it all. But it's been a real free pleasure to have one of my co-hosts uh, uh, take over the show and uh, doing an awesome job with some great information and uh, I can't thank you enough for sharing yourselves with us today. Um, we also send out a thanks to Steve Hargan, the founder of Classroom 20 Live, Teacher 20, Future of Education and Web 20 Labs Project for putting this all together and being our motivator and someone who uh, gave us the landing point to start off with. We also thank Weebly.com for providing our weaves our website, and that's where it's hosted. And to everyone in the show today, we're so happy to have all those great ideas. We are going to be collecting them and putting them into the live binder. And I think that's the last part of um, closing out the show. Anyone who wants to stay on, please feel free to. If you uh, can't, then please go back to the archives and resources page of our website so that you can catch the recording. So, Big Kim, I'm going to turn the, Mac, the mic back over to you now. Great, thank you so much. I lost where I was, but that's okay. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, these these guides that Gwyneth has created and QR codes at a glance telling you about what they are, the 2D codes, these are fantastic to just post in your classroom. Um, and in the uh, like a teacher's workroom, these are fantastic, and I highly recommend them. And there are links on the uh, the link that I created, and I'll show you that again at the end. And it is in the live binder link. And QR Voice, I wanted to show you that QR Voice is is a great little thing. It lets you um, create something, and if you type in something for um, it allows you to type in something up to just 100 characters, and I'm typing in something in Spanish. But you can type in something in any of these languages. It's not a translator, so whatever language you type it in. But this is great for foreign languages, for, for vocabulary, just something um, if you're teaching a foreign language or even in English. Uh, if you had an announcement or something that, you know, like for your students that you had to post on the wall, you know, field trip tomorrow at 10 o'clock and, you know, or you wanted something for your parents to be able to scan or your students or whatever. And if I'm going to go ahead and then click this right here to generate it. And so if you scan this, and I need to go back and do this in, let me do this in the, here we go. And if I do this in, I type this in Spanish, and you'll see all the different spoken languages. It's not a translator. You have to, whatever language you type it in, then you click here on the QR code. It generates it. Your students can just type in the URL. But if you scan this, on, you will hear on your cell phone, you will hear what I typed on QR voice. 
So you can do that now, and you will hear Buenos Dias. And it's just, and you can post this outside your wall. Um, you know, I have just a quick announcement, but it's limited to 100 characters. But it's just qrvoice.net, just an interesting, quick way to post something um, if you wanted to share with parents, staff, whomever. Um, just another innovative way. And that's QR Voice. Yes, you could have a QR code linked to another QR code if you wanted to. And Tag My Doc is a new one. You can upload files. Uh, once you upload it, then you'll be given a QR code. You can then share that QR code and then share out that document uh, without, if you didn't want to upload it to Google Docs and so forth that way. So Tag My Doc is a great way to share different documents with people. And they don't have to log in. They don't have an account or anything like that. You can share it with students, parents, or whatever. And Tag My Doc is a great way to share your documents and to share different files. Ubamark or Ubamark, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, is taking different books. Uh, the ones that I've showing right here is around the world in 80 days and unfortunately you can't scan this code it's too blurry but it's showing you the book around the world in 80 days and it has a QR code on the different pages and in this case and it's uh, some of them take you to different information about the book some of them take you to show you just the different words on that page it's like reading uh, the book on your mobile device. This one here, I had a hard time. Sometimes I can get these scans to work. Sometimes I can't. But you can scan these. This is a different um, publisher. But this one right here is by Wonder Tonic, these books, the barcodes. And you can see how detailed these are. But if you're able to scan these, um, you may not be able to scan them from here, but if you go to File and Save and save the whiteboard or to save the slides, you'll be able to scan these. And what it is is it's every single word on that page from the Adventures of Alice in Wonderland. And Wonder Tonic is, is converting these books to barcodes. And they're putting every word on that page from the different from a variety of books, and so you can read your these different books on your mobile devices. And I notice on Amazon from different uh, publishers, more and more are going to this type of thing. And Google has created a a project with, and the only way to to view what they call their Google Bookshelf is to use the Chrome browser, but they have a, a QR code at the bottom, and in order to get the book, you can scan it, and it takes you to uh, to get the book, and you can order it directly from there or read it, and sometimes you can read the QR code takes you to the words on the page, but this is a a project that Google has started, and it's called their Google Bookshelf or their Google Project, um, depending upon some of the things that you've seen. Or if you go to the Google blog, they they call it something different. But uh, this is what they've started, and you can only access it in the Chrome browser by Google. Now, if you didn't have a mobile device, you can use the Chrome browser by using Quick Mark the Quick Mark extension. Once you have it loaded in your browser, you'll see that it's active here. This is the resource, uh, the Den resources on becoming a star teacher, and I created a code in Snap View, and you'll notice that the QR code is here, and below it, it also has an ex um, it's showing part of the URL. So if I didn't have, yes, 
sometimes I have a problem with Chrome. Um, if you didn't want, if you didn't have a, a mobile device, you could also just type in the URL. But once you have this extension loaded, you can just hover over it, right click over it, and then it will decode whatever that QR code is from the the Chrome browser and it gives you that option. It shows you what the link is and where it's going to go to and then you can go to that link in your browser and it decodes the QR code for you. Um, not all QR codes have the URL below it so you don't necessarily know where it's going to go to. Uh, but this example here I just I went ahead and included the URL anyway. But there are two Chrome extensions that you can use. One is the Quick Mark one, which I use here, and one is called QR Code Tag. Firefox also has a plugin, and it's called Mobile Barcoder, and both work similarly for the two different browsers. Um, they work great if you're on your computer and you didn't want to use uh, your mobile device because you wanted to use that item on your computer, or you wanted to share it with teachers and you didn't want to um, use that information strictly on your cell phone. You wanted to be able to use those things on your laptop. So um, these are great ways to use your browser if you didn't have mobile devices or mobile devices um, aren't allowed to be used with your students um, or you didn't have funding able to purchase them. You can also set up a QR station, scan station, and it's also called Quick Mark. Um, you can use just a regular cheap webcam. You set it up and you can put it on your desktop, and the students bring over the QR code. They scan it just like if they were scanning it with their cell phone or iPad or iTouch. And then it goes directly, your computer goes to that website the, um, or shows the text or, or whatever is related to the QR code. And this is an example of a QR station that Atlanta King in New Zealand has set up. And there are two uh, desktop set up software solution. One's called QR Reader, and one is Quickmark. I tried the QR Reader, and I wasn't as successful. Um, but I have used the Quickmark, and the Quickmark one works great. Let me go ahead and remove that. I'm not sure where that came from. The Quickmark uh, software works great. I was successful with that. But the QR Reader, I wasn't, and some people have better luck with the QR Reader software than the QuickMark software. So um, both of them, you just kind of have to play around and see which QR, uh, which software works best for your QR station. Um, I think it's a great thing to set up in your classroom uh, if you're not able to use cell phones because then you still have your students engaged with QR codes. They're still using the technology, and there's a lot of things that they can use with the technology. And it's more than just scanning the codes, just to scan the codes and be able to say you're using QR codes in the classroom. But it's you're engaged with the content. You're using the, the technology to use the content and to use the content in the classroom in a meaningful and purposeful way not just to say that you're using this new piece of technology, just to say that you're using it. So these are anything that has a camera on it, you can install this software and or if you have or the smartphones you can use the QR readers. So this is a great way to uh, still be able to use QR readers and QR generators without using if you don't have the smartphones or the iPads and iTouches. You can still involve your students using QR codes and not just for QR code's sake, but for actually using the technology for meaningful purposes in your classroom. 
and I won't show this, um, but this is a great video from CSI. Um, some of the document readers, I, I don't think they, they'll work. I haven't been successful with that. But this is um, a, a, a segment from CSI. I can show it if, if you're interested. I don't know that, that we necessarily have time. It's just a, a real, like, um, about a minute segment from CSI where she's talking about the, um, the evidence and the, the way that they find the, the clue is that um, yes, so. She finds a part of a QR code. Wait a minute. Well, take a look at this. This pattern is just like what I found on the cardstock. It's a QR code. It stands for a quick response. Quick response to what? Well, you don't know until you scan it with something like my QR compatible cell phone. It takes you to a coffee company called Espresso Shock. It's hmm. clever. So the software on the phone converts the code into a web. So that's something that you could share with your students. Hey, it's on CSI, you know, kind of thing, if your students are older. So I thought that was cool that it was, you know, in the mainstream media. And if you, you can scan this QR code, it takes you to a Google Doc that I update. Um, it has part of the information from TCEA, and I've also added some more resources that I found in the past week or so. Um, you can also type in the URL if you don't have uh, um, a QR app on your device yet. I also recommend the, the Cell Phones in the Classroom book by Liz Kolb. She has some great case studies where they're using cell phones in the classroom and teaching generation text. Both of these have bits and pieces about QR codes that the teachers are using in the classroom, but it's very minimal on QR codes, um, more on the con about the process of using and the philosophy of using cell phones in the classroom. So I recommend those. QR codes are coming along and they're becoming more prolific in our environment. Um, they are becoming uh, more popular uh, with the content, and teachers are becoming more familiar, but it's not becoming as um, evolved in the classroom yet. Teachers are just starting to learn ways and coming up with ideas to incorporate them into the classroom. Um, a lot of them are thinking of them as just as, you know, technology to use just to scan. And again, I want to stress that it's not just, we don't want to use them just to, to scan and, and yeah, it's cool, it's fun, it's creative, it's innovative, and it is motivating to students to be able to, yeah, to scan and learn about, you know, the bismuth and the different periodic, uh, the elements on the periodic table instead of just learning about the different elements. but there, you know, it, it, there is some great content that goes with it, and you can structure some really great lessons that are involve critical thinking to go with the QR codes, so that you're not just scanning for QR codes for scanning, and you're not just generating QR codes just for being able to say that you generated them. And I do want to caution you, though to uh, this this little article that's kind of hard to read mentions Android users, but to make sure that um, when you're scanning these things, they can be attached to malware and viruses. So make sure that your students and you, especially if you're using the desktop browser ones, that you do know um, the source of where they came from, because there are people put QR codes out on the street all the time, and people just scan them, um, and so they can be attached to all kinds of things that 
you know, cell phones can become infected with viruses and wipe them out and cause problems, or they can get a hold of your contacts and, and some of the things that you, you know, identity and those kinds of things. So just to be cautious of the QR codes that you scan and to, just like you would any other website, to make sure that you know what you're scanning. And you can also, you know, just about like if you can put the QR code um, anywhere on, you know, on an object, on a website, you know, just to be cautious about all of the things that you can do with it and to make sure that your students are aware of those kinds of things. And you can scan these things. The pink one takes you to my blog. The left one takes you to the, uh, it should take you to the Google Doc with all the resources, but the Google Doc is, is also listed in the Live Binder along with all of the resources. And we'll post the Live Binder link again so that you don't necessarily need to scan that um, left code if you don't have that app on your uh, cell phone yet or your mobile device yet. But I want to thank you for having me today as your presenter. There's the link to the uh, Google Doc that will be added to the Live Binder. I thank you so much for this opportunity and listening to me about QR codes. It's become my passion for the past uh, several years. I got to present on QR codes at TCEA in Austin. Uh, the previous week, and I'm really grateful. I'll be happy to take questions now. Um, if there are any, I tried to catch them as we went along, but uh, you can always email me um, or contact me on Twitter or contact me on my blog. This has been recorded, so if you missed any part of it, and if you want to save the slide so that you can go along and scan these things later. Uh, it might be easier to scan from the PDF than it is from the, the um, from within Blackboard. In order to save the slides, you can go up to File and then click on Save and then click on the whiteboard and then it's going to, you'll want to save the whole group. Then you can uh, save it as a PDF. That way you can go through and you can print them out or you can um, just work from your computer and then you can save them and um, you can adapt these things for your grade level, your content. There's all kinds of things. Uh, the Live Binder has the Google Doc, and there are lots of other examples and resources on the and videos that are on the Google Doc that I didn't share with you. The Google Doc, um, the Live Binder have re more resources than you could ever possibly need or want, and the the slides as well. I'm going to upload the updated version to SlideShare so that you'll have access to all of that that you can go back and follow up later. Um, so that you have more QR code resources than you would ever possibly uh, want or need in your lifetime. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, check out the Live Binder. And if you have a question, please feel free to contact me on Twitter, Twerk, e email, whatever. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hope you feel better, McTeach. Thank you for stopping in and thank you everybody who stayed on for the last bit and if you do have questions I'm happy to stay on and ask questions and answer questions. If there's not questions, thank you so much for attending today. Thanks, Dory. Appreciate it. We will see you next Saturday for Paula White. She will be joining us. 
as the first featured nominated featured teacher and she's gonna be fantastic. She is phenomenal at what she does. And we will have a great weekend. See you next Saturday at the same time in the same place.